Hello everyone. In this video, let us see how to enable migrations in your code first. So to do so, I need to install from NuGet console. So I need to use console and I need to use the command enable migrations. Now after installing migrations, you will see a migrations folder that gets added automatically to your data access layer project. And there are two settings that you need to do. First of all, in your migrations, it will add configurations file automatically. You need to go to that file and you need to enable automatic migrations and you need to enable automatic migration data loss allowed. And you need to set initializer as well. So these are the two settings that you need to do. So first of all, I need to install NuGet from console. So I'll just go to my project. Tools, NuGet Manager. I'll just go for NuGet Manager console. Do remember the default project that you need to select from here. It should be data access layer. Here I'll say enable migrations and I'll press enter. Now you see that it is checking for these things. You get some yellow lines. Don't worry about that. Code first migrations enabled for the project EIS.dal. That means it has successfully enabled the migrations. Now let us see that you get migrations folder, you get initial create, you get configurations. Now in configurations, let me go to this configurations. You can see it says automatic migration enabled is set to false i need to set it to true and also automatic migration data loss allowed i need to set it to true that means uh, whenever i am removing a property that means it is going to lose that data okay i understand because it is in development phase i'm not much worried about that second thing i need to go to eis db context in the constructor, I need to add database set initializers. That's it. Now let me rebuild this. So rebuild succeeded. So this is my startup project. Now I will execute. Earlier we saw that it was throwing an error, but now it has not thrown any exception. Now let me look into my database, right click and I'll say refresh. Now if I look into the table role and columns, I find a column description and I'll close this. Now I'll just right click and say edit top 200 rows. I see two admins. Why? Because this admin I have created in my first execution and this is the admin that I am creating in second execution because it is auto generated ID is one two so no issues. So we are testing. Now you see that it has added role description column and values are null. Now if I simply go to my role table and if I comment it out and save this right click and rebuild it now let me execute now what it should do it should drop that column automatically just right click and say refresh now you see that that column has got dropped what about the data I have the data available because third execution I got third record so anyway, so we are done with the migrations enablement. So in our next video, we will see how to implement my business logic layer. Now you, you do not have any problem. You can add another object, then it will create another table for you. You want to update any column, you want to change any column. Everything is in your hand because we have enabled migrations. So any changes that you do here, they, they will automatically reflect in your database. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we will see how to create our business logic 
layer. Thank you very much.